Good morning, friends and family. I want to share uh, an article written by Andrew Murray, who, let's see, his life, he's, he was born in 1828, and he died in 1917. He spoke on holiness and humility in this article, and I wanted to share it with you. So in Isaiah 65 and 5, it says, Stand by thyself, for I am holier than thou. So we hear a great deal of seekers after holiness and professors of holiness, of holiness teaching and of holiness meetings. The great test of whether the holiness we prof profess to seek or attain is truth and life will be whether we be manifesting in the increasing humility that it produces in in us if it's producing in us so in the in man it, humility is the um he says creature in here but i'm just going to say man okay in the christian humility is the one thing needed to allow God's holiness to deal or to dwell in him and shine through him. In Jesus, the Holy One of God, who makes us holy, a divine humility was the secret of Jesus' life, his death and his exaltation. So the one infallible test of our holiness will be the humility before God and men that marks us humility is the bloom and it is the beauty a man of holiness so the mark the chief mark of counterfeit holiness is a lack of humility every seeker after holiness needs to be on his guard unless unconsciously what has begun in the spirit is pre perfected in the flesh and pride creeps in where its presence is least expected amen so in the scriptures it says two men went up and most of you probably know this scripture but let's go over it two men went up into the temple to pray the one a pharisee the other a publican in luke eighteen ten. There's no place or position or, or uh, so sacred, actually, but the Pharisee can enter there. So pride can lift up its head in the very temple of God and make his worship the scene of its self-exaltation. So since the time of Christ so exposed his... Uh, so expose this pride the pharisee has put on the garb of the publican now here and the confessor of deep sinfulness so equally with the professor the highest holiness must be on the watch we have to watch out for those attitudes of self-exaltation so just when we're most anxious to have our our heart to be the temple of God then we might find two men coming up to pray and the publican will find that his danger is not from the Pharisee beside him who despises him but the Pharisee within who commends and exalts him so in God's temple first uh, Corinthians six nineteen, when we think we are holiest of all in the presence of his holiness let us beware of pride job 1 and 6 says now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan came also among them amen so the bible goes on to say god i thank thee that i am not as other men or even as this publican in Luke 18, 11. So it's in that which is just cause for thanksgiving. It is in the very thanksgiving which we render to God. It may be 
the very confession that God has done it all, that self finds its cause for complacency. Yeah, even when in the temple, amen, where the language of penitence and trust in God's mercy alone is heard, then the Pharisee may take up the note of praise and in thanking God may be congratulating himself actually. I hope I'm making this understandable. Um, it's a little bit hard to read. It was written by Andrew Murray and, um, you know, so it's not like he's of our day. But anyway, um, even when in the temple where the language of penitence and trust in God alone is heard, the Pharisee, the Pharisee may take this note of praise and in thanking God, even in thanking God, hear me, may be congratulating himself. So pride can clothe itself in garments of praise or of penitence. So even, even though the words, I am not as other men are, are rejected and condemned, their spirit too, um, too often may be found in our feelings and in our language towards our fellow worshipers and fellow men. So how little of the meekness, how little of the gentleness of Jesus is going to be seen. It's so little remembered. It's so little taught, it, let alone remembered or taught. Deep humility must be the keynote of what the servants of Jesus say of themselves or each other. So is there not um, many a mission away when the harmony has been disturbed and the work of God hindered because of self-assertion or self-assessment or assertion, however you want to look at it, in sharp judgments and, and maybe in unkind words, and they did not each reckon others better than themselves which is what we're supposed to do we are supposed to see others better than ourselves treat others better than ourselves so their holiness has but little in it of the meekness of the saints or of what the saints should have so in their spiritual history uh, men may have had at times great humbling great brokenness but what a difference what a, a different thing this is from being clothed with humility. Amen? Being clothed with humility, which is what we need. From having a humble spirit, from having that lowliness of mind in which each counts himself the servant of others. Amen? We are called to serve others. And... um to count to treat others better than ourselves to and I can't think of the scripture offhand it's that's right on the tip of my tongue and we're to show forth the very mind which was also in Jesus Christ we are to prefer I think the scripture was about preferring our brethren so we can start by um humbling our own self learning the word of God finding out looking and seeing what was Jesus like what was Jesus's attitude how did he act how did he prefer his brethren because he is our example our attitude should never be you know what stand by for I am holier than thou that is not holiness Jesus the holy one is the humble one the holiest will, er, will ever be the humblest. The holiest will ever be the humblest. We want to walk close to Jesus. We want to be holy before God. We're going to stay humble before God. And that is not something, uh, that is not a gifting uh, or something that God gives us, but that is something we go after. I believe the Lord will help us with that as we pray about it. So there is none holy but God. So we have a much, uh, we have as much holiness as we have of 
God. And according to what we have of God will be our real humility. Because humility is nothing but the disappearance of ourself in the vision that God is all in all. Amen. So us disappearing and um, Christ being able to take up our vessel fully. Us giving us us giving him our whole self. So the holiest will be the humblest. And though um, sometimes barefaced boasting Jews of the of the days of Isaiah in sixty five five is often is not often to be found, even our manners have taught us not to speak this way. So how how often his spirit is still seen, whether in the treatment of fellow believers or of the children of the world. In the spirit in which opinions are given, think about it. In the spirit of which opinions are given, and I've been guilty of this myself, so I'm learning from this. Let me see. Did I lose my place? Um... I think I did. Let's see. Not found of other men. Okay. Humility to be found that men shall indeed shall count themselves less than the least of all saints. Ephesians 3 and 8. So the servants of all. That's what we should be. And that's how we should look at ourselves. This actually there is love right there. The servants of all. It vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, it seeketh not her own. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5. So when the spirit of love is shed abroad in the heart, then where the divine nature comes to full birth, where Christ the meek and lowly Lamb of God is truly formed within, there is given the power of a perfect love that forgets itself rather than exalts itself and finds its blessedness in blessing others. So when you bless others, you know, you become a servant to others, just like how Jesus came and he was, he served us. My, oh my, oh my, did he serve us? So where his love or where this love enters that is where God enters. Amen. God is love. And where God has entered in his power and he reveals himself as all. There the creature becomes nothing or the, the Christian becomes nothing. The man becomes nothing. And where the man becomes nothing, he is humble towards his fellow fellow men and women and the presence of God becomes not a thing of times and seasons but the covering under which the soul dwells it's deep abasement before God be becomes the holy place of his presence when all its words and works proceed and we're talking about proceed from God through us right so may God teach us that our thoughts, our words, and our feelings concerning our fellow men are his test of our humility towards him. That's our test. And that our humility before him is the only power that can enable us to always humble or be humble with our fellow men and women our humility must be the life of Christ the lamb of god within us we need to be so emptied out so we can be so filled up with jesus so all teachers of holiness whether they're in the pulpit or on the platform and all seekers after holiness you know whether they're in the prayer closet or the convention take warning because there is no pride so dangerous because none 
is so subtle and insidious as the pride of holiness. I hope everybody heard that. Let me say it again. There is no pride so dangerous because none is so subtle and insidious as the pride of holiness. So there grows up all unconsciously a hidden habit of soul that feels complacency in its attainments and cannot help seeing how far it is in advance of others. It can be recognized not always in, in any special self-assertion or self-evaluation, um, but simply in the absence of, it's noticed in the absence of that deep self-abasement which cannot be, cannot but be the mark of the soul that has seen the glory of God. So it reveals itself not only in words or thoughts, but in tone, a way of speaking of others in which those who have the gift of spiritual discernment, cannot but recognize the power of self. So even the world, with its keen eye, notices it and points, it, and points to it as proof that the profession of a heavenly, heavenly life does not bear any special heavenly fruit. So in saying that, I will say, as, as this article ends with, let us beware unless we make the increase of humility our study. We don't want to increase in pride, that's for sure. We may find that the only sure mark of, of the presence of God is the disappearance of self. Let me say that again. We may find that the only sure mark of the presence of God within us is the dis disappearance of ourself. So the Bible says, come and let us flee to Jesus and hide ourselves in him until we be clothed upon with his humility. And that alone is our holiness. And I'm going to close there. But um, it is a big warning to us. As I said, that was written by Andrew Murray. And it was so good. It was written as a warning to us. Because pride can so easily creep into our life. Even in the, in the way or the um, disguise of holiness. You know, I'm holier than you all are. Or, or you know, you might not just say it that way, but um, that's, it's a great warning for us to be aware that we are to become servants just like Jesus did. We're to be humble just like Jesus was. And humility is not just poured out on us like a gift. We have to go after that. I'm sure that within our old man is that sense of pride. And I've seen it in myself. I can admit that. I can be open enough to admit that. And had to rebuke that spirit of pride. We do not need it. We can take authority over it. I would just pray today, Father God, help us to recognize the exaltation of self. Help us, God, to empty ourselves and become filled up with your presence. That we might be filled up with all the fullness of Christ Jesus. Definitely be filled up with humility. All right, I'm going to close there. And that is my prayer. That is my prayer for each and every one of us. That we will not be self-exalted or, or exalted by the enemy and receive that. But abased, amen, but become servants. But become, we need to, I should have looked up some of those scriptures in regard to that. And I did not, but it, 
any of you can do that and I probably will do that myself because um, that is a big issue. It's not taught in the churches today. A lot of things are not taught in the churches today that are in the Bible. But um, take heed. That's how this that's how this article ended. Take heed, brethren. That's what Andrew Murray said. And I'm going to take heed. I want to be, I, I would just want to be so submitted to God that he can use me. And I believe, you know, many times, there have been times that my attitude hasn't been right or um, my feelings haven't been right or whatever. But the Lord has shown me those things at different times. And I think it's time for uh, not only me, but the whole church to arise to that place of humility that God has called us to. Because we can do nothing without him. He did it all. Praise the Lord.